Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So recently an interview aired on 60 Minutes with CNN owns Anderson Cooper and self-proclaimed young radical Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Now, as you can probably imagine, I'm not the greatest fan of Ocasio-Cortez, however, recently I had actually started to warm to her as someone who might be slightly deluded with no idea of what socialism actually is, but who is ultimately well-intentioned. Until I saw this. I think that there's a lot of people more concerned about being precisely factually and semantically correct than about being morally right. And just like that, she confirmed everything that I had initially suspected about her. That behind that fresh-faced, nice girl facade, she was just another regressive leftist who thinks facts are racist and feelings are more important than truth, hiding behind the banner of working for the common good when, really, we all know what they actually want. <laughs> Quite disappointing really. But the thing is, when it comes to the self-titled progressive left, people who criticize them regularly, like I do, do have days of doubt. There are some days that I wake up in a particularly good mood that my elevated state of mind causes me to think, well, maybe they do actually mean well. Maybe they've just had really miserable lives, so have been drawn to this group of cushy misfits who reassure them that everything wrong with their lives is somebody else's fault. But then they do things like this. And I am reminded exactly why I can't stand them. I hate them. <laughs> Just hate them. Very quickly, I go back to my rather cynical opinion that they're all just inner-city trust fund babies with a relatively low IQ who can actually afford to look at the world through the prism of race, gender, and sexuality as opposed to that of paying the bills, raising kids, and keeping a job. These are just some of the reasons that I can't stand progressives. And I say progressives loosely because some of their views about, say, defining people by their different racial groups and protecting women from seeing and hearing things that may possibly make them feel slightly uncomfortable are actually very regressive. That's why they are not so fondly nicknamed the regressive left. But what I can't stand most about them is their insistence that they are good people. Advocates of tolerance and acceptance working towards a better world while behaving like lunatics and hurling insults at anyone who dares to even slightly disagree with them. In other words, while I think progressives are totally entitled to their opinions, they don't believe I'm in any way entitled to mine. They believe that their rightness justifies their rudeness. That attitude drives me up the wall and I'm sure most of you will agree with me. But again, are we correct in our assumptions, or are we just being grumpy right-wingers intent on spoiling the little children's fun, so to speak? Well, I actually did some digging on the topic, so you don't have to, and to my dismay, I found that everything we all suspect about progressives is true, and then some. Here's what I found. The way progressives carry on, you'd think they represent the views of the majority. They represent anyone with a conservative viewpoint as either symptomatic of a dying breed of old straight white men, or an attention seeker and a traitor if you are one of the women LGBT people or racial minorities who is clever and enlightened enough to step outside of the identity politics box. They have no interest in anyone's contrasting opinion, and if you put that to them, they actually will often admit to it. That's why they were so shocked when Hillary Clinton lost the 2016 election. They had no idea that any sizable amount of people disagreed with them. And I have the numbers to prove it. An October 2018 study from the group More in Common, entitled Hidden Tribes, discovered that America is largely split into seven different ideological categories. These are 
progressive activists, traditional liberals, passive liberals, politically disengaged, moderates, traditional conservatives, and devoted conservatives. The study divided these tribes into three groups, the left wing, the right wing, and the exhausted majority. As you can see, and much to my great satisfaction, progressives, the sole tribe in the left-wing camp, make up only 8% of the US population, while still managing to control most of the media, whereas traditional and devoted conservatives, classified as the right-wing, make up a full 25% of the population. As for the exhausted majority, you'd think that their views would vary and they'd split quite specifically into the different and opposing wings, right? Wrong. 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 That is it's wrong. And he did the wrong thing. Wrong. That is absolutely wrong. As it turns out, traditional and passive liberals disagree with progressives on a number of points, and those in the politically disengaged camp, which is 26% of the population, are much more closely aligned with conservatives than they are with liberals and progressives. So, all around, it's bad news for progressives. Contrary to popular belief, not only do they not have the majority viewpoint, they don't even have the middle-of-the-road, politically disengaged tribe on board. As it is, 66% of the US population either is or leans conservative. So, not quite the support for a socialist utopia yet, Alexandria. <laughs> Progressives claim to be the champions of racial minorities. They insist that they are a racially diverse group of egalitarians who understand and relate to the poor and disenfranchised. But in reality, and according to the Hidden Tribe study, the truth is somewhat different. See, it turns out that far from being the racially diverse group of battlers they claim to be, progressives are overwhelmingly white and rich. They are nearly twice as likely as the average person to earn over a hundred thousand US dollars a year. They are nearly three times more likely to have a postgraduate degree. And while 12% of the overall sample in the study is African American, only 3% of progressive activists are. So, with the exception of the little tribe of devoted conservatives, who make up only 6% of the population, progressives are the most racially homogenous group in the USA. So if you've ever wondered why Antifa seems to be made up of mostly white people while screaming Black Lives Matter, well, this is why. Have you ever rolled your eyes at that endless stream of buzzwords like racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe, white supremacist that progressives throw at any argument that's somewhere to the right of Bernie? Yeah, me too. But have you ever wondered exactly why they do that? Well, it's because progressives genuinely do not understand conservative arguments and also have no interest in doing so. So when that blue-haired SJW screams, RACIST! For daring to suggest that maybe open borders aren't such a good idea, that's not an insult or a deflection. They genuinely think you are racist, at least according to psychologist Jonathan Haidt. Mr. Haidt says that humans tend to live in a sort of moral matrix. He identifies five categories that serve as our moral foundation. Care and harm, fairness and reciprocity, loyalty and betrayal, authority and subversion, and sanctity and degradation. Haidt found that both conservatives and liberals accepted the care, harm, and fairness reciprocity values. However, progressives and liberals rejected loyalty and betrayal, authority and subversion, and sanctity and degradation as immoral and restrictive. Conservatives, on the other hand, accepted all five categories. In order to test this further, Haidt conducted a study to find out how well progressives and conservatives understand each other by asking 2,000 Americans to fill out a moral foundations questionnaire. One third of the time they were asked to fill it out normally, answering as themselves. One third of the time they were asked to fill it out as they think a typical liberal would respond. And one third of the time they were asked to fill it out as a typical conservative. As it turned out, moderates and conservatives were the most accurate in their predictions, both when pretending to be liberals and pretending to be conservatives. 
Liberals were the least accurate, especially if they described themselves as very liberal. So if you suspected that progressives have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to describing conservatives, you are 100% correct. They don't. But you can take heart from the fact conservatives seem to be all over our opposition, which bodes very well for who's going to win the culture wars. Well, there you have it. Everything you've ever suspected about the regressive left is unfortunately true. They are pretending to be something they're not. They pretend to be diverse when actually they're racially homogenous. They pretend to be one with the poor and disenfranchised when actually they're some of the richest people in the world. And they pretend to want a better world when really all they want is power. And while regardless of all of this, they are perfectly entitled to their opinions, I still cannot stand them. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for other ways you can support me. Thank you.